All right, all right, all right, all right. Good morning, Brookside. It's so good to hear everybody chatting and having a good time this morning. But save some of that chat for later after church because we have uh, a meal in the social hall. There's um, chili and macaroni and cheese. And I think as of the last I looked, there were like six different uh, chilies entered in the chili cook-off. So you'll be able to vote. I'm not going to say which one is mine, but it's a different color than everybody else's. So that's all I'm going to (laughs) say. Cool. No, no, I can't say which one's mine, but mine's not red. But uh, so (laughs) we're going to get going here in a minute. So if you could silence your cell phones, if you are a first time visitor. Welcome. We are so glad you are here. Thank you. You've come to a very safe place to hang out with some very safe people. And what we do here is we just praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are glad that you are here with us today. If you want to fill out one of these packets, that would be awesome. They're available out in the foyer. Um, so we've got a bunch of announcements today. Um, Grief share every Monday at one o'clock in the war room, and that's with Sally. There's going to be altar ministry training starting October 19th, and that will be held 6.30 up in the upper room, and see Nat for that. I just saw Nat somewhere, but if you don't know Nat, you will know. Um, Bible study is this, men's Bible study is this Saturday, 9 a.m. up in my office upstairs, Uh, Firestarter is back uh, for our second meeting, October 22nd, so that's next Sunday, and that'll be at 6.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. There is a bake sale for Compassion Child, and that'll be on Sunday, November 5th, after the morning service. So we've got some other cool stuff going on. Um, October 24th. At the Sealands Grove Theater, there's going to be a presentation of the Domino Revival movie. And um, they, they've set this up where there are hosts f- for the event. And uh, Stephanie, Alicia, and uh, Natalie have signed up to be hosts a- at the event. And um, there'll be a live stream after so it, where there, there'll be prayer and deliverance and um, It's supposed to be a very powerful movie, and um, because um, the gals from our church are hosting it, if you need help with tickets, they have some free tickets, and that is on October 24th. And, um, you know, it's always good to go out out to these movies and let the box, let let us (laughs) speak with with our money, because when these Christian movies do well, it shows Hollywood what we really want to see. And, uh, you know, it's been a powerful thing because they keep coming and coming and coming because they've been more profitable than the uh, Alphabet Soup movies. So um, so that's good. So the other thing we have going on, which uh, is going to start this uh, this Wednesday night, we are having a special Wednesday night service and it's a community outreach prayer for Israel night. So we're going to have regular worship and then we're going to have prayer afterwards for Israel. And we've invited, the, we, we did a Facebook post, in fact, the thing's up there now, and uh, we're inviting the community. It's not just for Brookside, it's for everybody. And um, we're going to read some Psalms, we're going to pray for Israel, it'll be open mic, it'll be, it's not going to be like our regular prayer meeting, it's going to be just in the sanctuary, but there'll be open mic where you can come up and you can pray for Israel. And, um, you know, <laughs> Patty and I, and I know there's a bunch of people here that have been to Israel it's this tiny little postage stamp, but everybody wants it because it's God's, it's, it, it belongs to God, and evil is trying to take it away, and we just need to be backing uh, our brothers and sisters in Israel. So that is all I have for announcements, unless I forgot to announce that there is a fellowship dinner afterwards, and uh, please, it, you know... Some people brought chili, some people brought... But if you didn't bring anything, we want you to come anyway. (laughs) Please come, please come. And so where is my favorite Suzanne? She's coming. Here comes Suzanne. 
We'll get this going. Yay, Suzanne. Woo. Good morning. Well, continue to abide We're in John 15, 4. Join me. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Amen. Praise God. Those words of Jesus are very clear. Can you say amen? amen? Boy, I'm excited about being with you this morning. I'm excited about being with God because I tell you what, he's been waiting for a long time this week for you to gather here on a Sunday morning. He wants to meet with you. He wants to meet with me. And when that happens, something definitely goes on that brings glory to himself. Can you say amen? amen. amen. I hope you're ready for God to touch you this morning. I, I hope that you have, are on the tiptoes of expectation that God's going to do something in your heart and life today. Well, we're going to take up an offering when the worship team comes and starts to lead in worship. We're going to pray over that right now. Dear Father, we thank you for the way you bless us. We thank you for the abundance that you do give us. We pray right now, Father, for people who are struggling financially, that you will touch them in a mighty way, that you would minister to them, and you would help them to see there is a way to be in the blessing that you provide. I ask, O oh, Father, right now, that this offering be used to further the kingdom of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and everybody said, Amen. All right, now together, dear Spirit of God, dear of God come upon us. Come upon me. Heal. 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 Restore. 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 We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Do you have a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Promise keeper, you finish what you begin. Our provision through the desert, you see it through till the end. You see it through till the end. Yes, we can know 
throne You're still on the throne You didn't go anywhere You're not hiding anywhere You're still working when we cannot see Lord, all right. There we go. Root, doot, doot. Come on. All right. Six, eight. Here we go. Church, come on, help us out. We need your help. That outlasts darkness There is hope that's in the blood This future grace that's mine today That Jesus Christ has won So I can grace tomorrow For tomorrow's in your hands All I need you will provide just like you always have. Amen. I'm fighting the battle that you already won. And no matter what comes my way, I will overcome. Don't know what you're doing. But I know what you've done Oh, I'm fighting a battle That you've already won There's mercy in the waiting There's manna for today but when it's gone, I know you're not, and you are my hope and stay. When the sea is raging, your spirit is my help. He'll fix my eyes on Jesus Christ. I'll say that it is well. Yes, I know that.
You're my Savior, my defense. I'll no fear in life or death. I know how the story ends. We will be with you again. You're my savior, my defense. No more fear in life or death. know how many know we all face challenges from the little ones to the big ones we have we have the day ruiners right and we have the ones that might ruin a whole week We have ones that ruin a lot longer than that. And most of the time when those challenges we face, we're, we sing these songs and we act like we're not facing them alone, but most of the time we just, our first reaction is to take it on. Let's, let's, let's figure this out. Let's, and, we, and, and we take it on ourselves. And we just, church, we weren't created to do that. And it's good. Isn't it good he created us to depend on him? We serve a God that created us 
to simply not be able to handle the challenges without his help. Yes, God. Yes, Lord, we need you. We depend on you. We rely on you, oh God. We thank you, God. You are always there. Amen. Yes, God. Oh, 
place under his wings I will take refuge amen in the shadow of his wings oh I take my refuge in the shadow of his wings He knows my heart. He knows my weaknesses. He knows my strengths. He gave me all those things. He has called me by my name. My Redeemer. My saving grace. You are, you are my fortress. I take my refuge in you alone. step God be my source be my guide Holy Spirit lead me be my strength not just when I'm weak but all the time Lord. yes God yes you are my strength you are You're my healer. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Isn't his presence good this morning, church? Yes, thank you, God, for your presence. Oh, 
sweet Jesus. I 
just won't speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus just gave me very, something very simple and we all know the verse in the Bible the joy of the Lord is our strength for the Lord says today there's a lot going on there's a lot to be depressed about there's a lot to be anxious about there's just a lot going on but the Lord says today it's the joy my joy of the Lord that gives you strength it's my joy that gives you the strength to worship in the midst of everything that's going on. For the Lord says today, just tap into my joy because in my presence there is peace. 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 Praise the Lord for peace. Can you say amen? I really enjoyed worship this morning. Thank you, Pastor Johnny and team. There is peace in our midst today because God is our God of peace. Can you say amen? There are some prayer concerns that we need to lift up before the Lord. A number of people have asked me to pray for certain needs. Brian would like us to pray for his father and mother. They both need healing. We have Richard and Glory here. They still need healing. Deb was here, but she's not here now, but she fell and hurt herself. We need to lift her up in prayer. I'm talking about Nathan's daughter. Rhoda called in. She's ill. Gretchen's been sick. She needs energy and strength. Pray for my daughter, Rachel. She needs some help, too, in life. And then Leah's daughter's friend. Her name is Kay Lee. She was in a terrible accident. They didn't think she would survive, but she had survived, but she needs further healing. And then we want to pray for Israel. I want you to know that I have some Jewish blood in me. I'm not totally that. My first uh, response when I heard about what was happening over there was I wanted to go and fight, but of course I couldn't do that. I said to myself, how can we pray for Israel? There's so many things concerning Israel. 
and the Palestinians. And I said, the best prayer I can pray is the prayer in the spirit, yes. Amen. the prayer language. But this morning, we're going to pray that God will protect Israel, that God will fight for Israel. Can you say amen? amen? And then we need to pray for our country as well. So will you join me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of these that need healing. We know that you are the healer. You're ready to heal them, whether they be present here or away from here. He's Spirit of God. You're the invisible healer. Come upon them right now. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. I pray, Lord, that you heal and restore each one of them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether it's healing or strength they need, provide it even now. Come upon them. Heal and strengthen Jesus name I pray for Israel Lord fight for Israel fight for Israel fight for Israel in Jesus name and then our country is divided concerning Israel and the Palestinians Lord bring healing to our nation in Jesus name our nation needs so much healing undertake in the name of Jesus and I pray this morning as we share the word of the Lord that you'll touch us today, that you'll challenge us in the light of eternity, that you'll speak emphatically to us. I ask that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Will you stand? Praise God. It's my privilege to stand before you this morning. I thank God for each and every one of you. You're so important to the kingdom of God and certainly the person of God. And I know he has something for you today. He wants to touch you very deeply. If you look up at the screen, you'll notice something. Cast all your care on the Lord. The scripture, if you'll notice up there, is 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. I want you to just think about that as you're seated. We've already prayed over the message, so if you would be seated now, please. I want you to think about that word casting this morning. If you think about 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, the real meaning behind the word casting is to hurl, to throw, or to cast. This is from the original language. I want you to know it often means violently to throw or to fling something with great force upon, as on the top of something. The only other place in the New Testament this particular word in the original language is found in Luke chapter 19, verse 35. Look at that passage of scripture, if you would, on the screen. So they brought the coat of Jesus and threw their garments over it, for him to ride on. Notice the word throw. Notice it, it's underlined. The same word in the original language is tr translated in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 with the word casting. God wants us to know something about what we're thinking about today when we read this passage in Luke chapter 19, verse 35. Let me give you a background. Jesus, Jesus is going to make his triumphal entry. And what is happening, he's on his way to Jerusalem. They come to a village, and Jesus said to two disciples, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go in there, and there's a young colt. When it says a young colt, it means a young donkey. I want you to go to where it's tied, and I want you to untie it and get ready to bring it to me. If they ask you anything about what you're doing, just tell them that the master needs this colt. And so the disciples obeyed, they went, they went and untied this uh, colt or this young donkey. And as they did, someone said to them, what are you doing? And they said to them, just what they were told. The master needs him. And so they brought this donkey over to Jesus. And the Bible says that they threw their garments over it for him to ride on. In other words, they cast these garments on him, okay. I think what's important to note in this particular passage is this, the flinging of a garment, a flinging of a bag or excess weight off the shoulders of a traveler and onto the back of a donkey is what this is illustrating. Today, some of us have cares 
And when we have cares, they're getting heavier and heavier. And what God wants us to know is we're to cast these cares upon Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen? I'm convinced today everyone in this place, probably at some time or another, and maybe even today, are under something. Something is very heavy in their lives. Something they cannot solve on their own. I'm here to tell you, you were not made to carry the burden of worry. You were not made to carry the burden of anxiety. This load is simply too much for you. It's too much for me, by the way. It's too much because of our human body. It cannot stand up under it for very long. In the central nervous system, it cannot be there very long before there's a breakdown there. We may be able to manage it for a while, but I want to tell you what's going to happen finally or eventually. Our physical body and our mind begin to break under this type of pressure. How many know we're all under pressure today? Yeah. We really, really are. In fact, the medical world has confirmed that the major source of sickness in the Western Hemisphere is stress and pressure. In fact, when you think about it, you were not created to simply carry pressure. You weren't created to carry stresses and anxieties and worries. This is the reason your body breaks down. This is the reason my body breaks down because of all these negative influences. If you're struggling this morning, and some of you may be struggling with sickness, maybe you're struggling with depression, your condition could be related to stress and pressure. Stress and pressure. I want you to think with me about 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. I believe it's as though Jesus is calling out to you and me. He wants us to hear something he would say to us. How many believe Jesus is here today? Amen. How many believe he's walked up and down these aisles? Didn't Jesus say that we're two or three are gathered together in and around my name, there am I in the midst? How many have read the book of Revelation chapters 2 and 3? There are seven churches that are singled out. In each case, Jesus is in their midst. He's here today. And I believe this is what he's calling to you about. He's calling to me about. Your shoulders are not big enough to carry the burdens you're trying to bear yourself. This will eventually break you. So please, Jesus is saying, let me be your beast of burden. Just like the disciples cast their garments on the donkey. I want you to cast your burden on me. Take that burden and listen to this. And heave it with all your might. Amen. Just don't say, here it is, Lord. But heave it with all your might. I think what happens too often is we come to an altar and we say, take it, Lord. I put it on your shoulders. We get up and we walk out, get out in the car. Maybe even before we get out there. And then the devil tries again to bring us back to that place where we are taking on ourselves stress, taking on ourselves disappointment. We're, we're sensing that we're being defeated again in our mind. I'm here to tell you this is what Jesus is saying. Fling it over onto my back and let me carry it for you. And just as it said in Luke chapter 19, verse 35, they cast their garments on the back of the donkey. Now you need you need to cast your burdens over on the Lord and let him carry those burdens for you. But what exactly are the problems that you are to throw onto the shoulders of Jesus? The Apostle Peter says we are to cast all our cares on Jesus, not 30%, not 50%, not 75%, but 100%. Can you say amen? The word cares really means anxiety. I want you to look up at the, the screen, if you would, please. However, in principle, cares describe any affliction, difficulty, hardship, and misfortune, trouble, or complicated circumstance that arises as, as a result of problems in our life. It could refer to problems that are financial. It could refer to problems that are marital or job-related, family-related, business-oriented, business or anything else that concerns us. This means something today that you need to hear. Anything that causes you to worry, anything that causes you to have anxiety, regardless of what has happened, we need to fling it on the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. We need to throw it on him. And this is what you need to see today in your life. You need to see yourself 
right now in your minds. See yourself throwing all of the cares, all of the worries, all of the anxieties on Jesus. Nothing is too big. Nothing is too small to talk to the Lord about. Peter says, for he cares for you. Look at the screen, and I want you to notice something. The word cares means to be concerned, to be thoughtful, to be interested, to be aware, to notice, or to give painful and careful attention. And really, what Peter is saying here, he's saying Jesus really does care about you. Do you know that? We, if I would ask you, does Jesus care about you, you'd say, yes, definitely he cares about me. But we don't act like it. Can you say amen? He wants us to understand that anything that's heavy on your heart today, he wants you to throw it on Jesus. In fact, he gives careful attention to what's happening to you. He gives careful attention to what's happening to me because he really cares. He's interested in every facet of your life. So don't ever let the devil tell you that your problem is too stupid, too small, or insignificant. Bring it to Jesus. Can you say amen? The Lord is interested in everything that concerns you, everything, even the small as well as the big. When I saw these words years ago, and I perceived how deeply Jesus cared about the burdens that I was carrying, I was walking around, maybe I was erect in my posture, but inside I was really under a weight. I was under a load. I realized I was carrying a load that Jesus didn't want me to carry. I didn't have to bear it by myself. Jesus was standing right there at my right side, or right at my side, as you should say, longing to help me, inviting me to shift my weight of, of cares from my shoulders to his shoulders. He's strong. Can you say amen? amen. By faith, I heaved those, care, those cares under the back of Jesus. And when I did it, I was set free from the stress, from the anxiety, from the pressure that had been weighing me down in my life. I felt free. It's wonderful to have that kind of freedom. Can you say amen? You just go, Jesus has it. You don't have to carry the whole weight of the world. Do you know that? He doesn't want you to carry the whole weight of the world on your shoulders. He wants you to be free. He wants you to learn how to throw it on Jesus. Jesus loves you so much. He's so concerned about you right now he, that he's here. And he's saying, put your difficulties on my shoulders. If you put your difficulties on my shoulders, I'll tell you what, I will lift them off from you. You will have a freedom inside of you that you haven't had for a long, long time. It'll, I'll change you internally so that you will trust in me instead of trusting in yourself. You... You'll have a change inwardly. You'll become an overcomer rather than a defeated person. That's what he wants you to know today. Roll these burdens over on me. That's what Jesus says to you. That's what he says to me. Let me carry them for you so you can be free. I think this should be your attitude today and my attitude. Jesus, I'm yielding every one of these concerns to you today. Can you say that to him? You need to say it. You need to say it. I cast my burden on you, and I thank you for setting me free. Again, let me explain something. I do ask Jesus to take me off my own hands. But sometimes you've got to be more dramatic than that. You need to say, Lord, I'm throwing this on you. I'm throwing it on you. You speak to the devil and say, devil, I'm throwing this on Jesus. I'm not going to carry it anymore. I'm going to let Jesus take care of me and take care of it so I don't have to go through life being under it. I don't have to be under stress all the time. I don't have to be under all of these things that cause me to have anxiety. But I can be free in whom Jesus sets free is what? Free indeed. That's what he wants to do to you. Now, as God put this message on my heart, he had you in mind. You today that have a care and maybe many cares. Sometimes we don't say what they are because we're afraid that people will think that we're not an overcomer. Sometimes we say it all over the place. <laughs> we let everybody know, I'm under it, I'm defeated, I have a financial need, I don't know how to be, I'm here to tell you, throw it on Jesus. It sounds like strong language, but that's what the word casting really means. That's what it meant when the disciples threw their clothes over the back 
of the donkey. He wants to do that today. I think that that helps us to be really, really where we should be. Because again, when I say, Jesus, take me off my hand, own hands, a little while later, the devil's right back again. He's saying, Jerry, can you handle this? I don't know if you can handle this, Jerry. Jerry, you need help. I'll say, look, you devil, I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you something that you need to hear. I'm casting it on Jesus. Here, Jesus, I throw it on you. I throw it on you. I throw it on you. I will not be controlled by it any longer because I'm going to walk in a freedom that Jesus has given me. Hallelujah. That's what I'm going to do. And you know, when the Lord puts a message on somebody's heart, there's a reason. I dare say that there are people here today that need to cast something on the Lord. I'm going to ask you to stand and give you that opportunity. How many could be honest and lift your hand today and say, I need to do something. I need to cast some things on the Lord. I've carried him too long. I've carried him too long. It may even be condemnation when Jesus is already forgiving you, but the devil keeps, keeps coming along, makes you guilt-ridden. I'm going to ask you to do one thing. I'm asking you to step forward. Come up here. First of all, I need all of the older team up here. You that lifted your hand up, will you come down the middle aisle and the side aisles? Will you come now in the name of Jesus? He wants to set you free, but you've got to really take charge in a sense. I like the word throw. I like the word cast. I like it because we're making up our mind that we're not going to be ruled over. Jesus is a good catcher. He'll catch it. He'll catch what you throw on him every time. There's some more people that raise their hand. You need to come in Jesus' name. You need to let him take over in your life. Spirit of the living God, I've obeyed you this morning. And I know that as I've stood before this audience, it was as though you stood before. Not in a perfect way did I present it, but it's what you wanted this body to hear. Something that we need to really, really do. We need to do it in Jesus' name. May everyone that's come forward, may they cast, may they throw, may they throw their cares, may they throw, Lord, their anxieties, may they throw everything on you, Jesus. May they get up and walk away. And the next time they're tempted to be able, to, or tempted to really think about these things. May they throw it again on you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know you're doing it. I know you're doing it right now, Lord. You're doing it in the lives of people because your spirit is always willing to meet us where we are, to change us, to set us free, to deliver us. Hallelujah. Bless him. You that are out there that didn't feel led to come up, will you raise your hand towards all of these people and pray for them? That's your responsibility as well as mine. In the name of Jesus, help him. Help Robin right now. You know his need. You know what he's been through. You know all those things, Lord, that he's had to contend with. I ask in the, oh, glory to God. I ask in the name of Jesus that he release them, that he throw them on you right now, that he cast them on you in the name of Jesus. Do it, Father, do it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.